I would say that I absolutely think magnesium is really, really important. Um, and, and as you said, you know, like they're, you know, half, at least back back in 2014, you know, 45% of the U.S. population was not getting adequate amounts of it. What does that mean for people? Like if they're not getting enough, you know, most people be like, oh, I, you know, okay, I'll have a banana or something. Like what is what does that mean in terms of symptoms? Like why do we need this much magnesium? Well, for, for one, it's hard to say that. It, so because magnesium is stored in muscle tissue and in bones, your, your body, anytime it's low, it pulls it out of those. So your plasma levels, unless you're like severely deficient, your plasma levels aren't going to really indicate much of a, a deficiency. So the way that inadequacy or deficiency like I'm talking about has measured is, is from um, dietary intake. So people aren't getting what they're supposed to be getting, you know, depending on if they're a man or a woman, it's like between 300 to 400 milligrams a day of magnesium. And most people aren't doing that, meaning they're not eating the right foods. Um, you know, these foods, magnesium is high in uh, dark leafy greens. It's, you know, magnesium is at the center of a chlorophyll molecule. Chlorophyll give plants a green color. So things that are dark and green plants have, have a lot of magnesium. Um, of, of course, it's bound up to some, some of it's bound up to phytate, which can, you know, affect the bioavailability. Um, nuts also are a great source. But the thing is, is you're probably not going to have a clinical symptom. Like you're not going to wake up and, and go, oh my, you know, like I can see DNA damage happening because magnesium is critical to repair damage of your DNA. But that's not something you can see. That's not even something that's mm -hmm. ever clinically measured, right? I mean, it's not like if you had scurvy, right? You're, you were so vitamin C deficient, you had scurvy that your gums started bleeding, wake up in the morning, you're like, you're like, right. oh, my gums are bleeding. Maybe I like, you know, should, should get some vitamin C. But magnesium, I mean, this is, this is one of those things where it's insidious types of damage that over the course of decades builds up and starts to lead to diseases of age, right? Um, you know, defects in DNA repair absolutely play a role in cancer, big time role in cancer. And also just in like cellular dysfunction, when you start to accumulate damage and stuff, cells don't work as well, including in the brain. So magnesium is also critical for uh, the production of ATP and the utilization of it. So you can have low energy. That is one of, you know, potentially maybe. But see, you know, the thing is, is that it's possible that because you need to make energy to survive, that the, your, your, all your magnesium then will be used for things that are critical to prevent death in the short term, right? So this is um, part of my mentor's theory, uh, triage theory on aging that he's that he's talked about and published on where, uh, you know, some of these, some of these little insufficiencies in, in micronutrients like magnesium, they are, uh, they are resulting in insidious damage that builds up over decades, things that you aren't aware of, but show up later in life and actually, uh, as diseases of aging. And so, you know, hmm. regulate the aging process itself. So I, I don't know that you're really going to know if there is a real clinical yeah. symptom, unless you're severely magnesium deficient.